so I'm just um, going to make another video for you which is this one and I am going to go a little bit slower on the puff stitches so I'm just recreating the beginning cluster if it is at any point that you feel I am going too fast because it's really un it's um, unusual to go this slow so I'm kind of out of my comfort zone in the uh, going this slow if I'm honest so just bear with me if I do end up speeding up it's just because I'm getting into a flow of work and not it's not intentional so bear with me a moment I've just put some moisturizer on my hands as well which is probably the worst time to put it on oh got my chains sorry so I'm just recreating the granny square um rows that we would you would be working in the frost uh, blue I think it is all of the colours on the blog do have the alternative colour ways in because we have had an issue with being able to obtain the original colours because things have changed since um, starting the pattern and unfortunately um, I can't get hold of some of those colours at, at the current moment just pull that tight. We've got our four corners. Right. Oh, hang on. Two chains. And then stitch. Okie dokie. So you have your first granny square. Then create one, two, three. Then go another one for your bridge over your space. Into here, I've got a big fat fly going around my room. Honestly, I don't know if anybody else is having issues with flies, but we are most likely because we have a dog. Get one, two, and create your next cluster square. Oh, like so. And then one chain. And again, I am working on a larger hook because in the original video, you will have seen that I started off on a four and it just wasn't working. So again, if at this stage you're, you're finding that some of your corners are starting to curl up, bear in mind that you may need to begin changing into a, a hook that's slightly larger than the one you're working on. So if you're working on a four, try four and a half. If it still continues, go up to the five. It won't hurt your blanket. Um, it'll just help it to settle out. The size of the blanket as well is 120 centimeters, roughly, um, per side because it's square, so it's 120 centimeters on all four sides. But again, that will also differ depending on your tension. So don't get too fixated. If you're happy with your tension and how your blanket's looking, then that is entire, that's completely fine. If it's bigger, completely fine. You may need that you more you might need more wool because your tension is looser. So just bear those things in mind because they all have an effect on your finished product. So if you are finding that your tension is too loose and you're having the opposite of too holy. Um, just bear in mind that you may need to go down the size hook. So we've got two in our cluster there. We've just come up to our third chain. So one, two, three, we work into that. Work into the front so that you pick up that loop and then push back on the back loop with your finger, like so. And then you should have two loops like that. And then stitch, stitch together. Right, so that's our first section. Let's cut that nice and long. <clears throat> okay, stitch stitch by pulling all the way through, tying it up as much as we can in the direction that we would be working in, so pull that way. <clears throat> it's nice and flat, which is good. Um, this is the time to check those little things. The next stage is to create our puff stitches. So I'm going to be working in mauve. For you, this will be let me check. 
you will be working in frost blue. We start off with amethyst. So this would be amethyst on the original colorway, and then we would be working into frost blue here. So this would be amethyst or lake blue even. But if you look at the blog now, you'll find that there's three colors in your color change, depending on which color way you have. Um, will greatly depend on obviously which color you use next. So please bear that in mind because we have um, some of you will have the original colorway because there was enough stock because you you ordered quite early. For those of you who have ordered at a later date, you may find that you have an alternative colorway as a substitution for the original. <coughs> so our next color now, <coughs> excuse me, is the mauve or the frost blue. And we're going to be working on the cross stitches. So in this section, each corner has two puff stitches living inside here, so we chain three. Now when we do a puff stitch, we go yarn over, yarn over, yarn over, and continually do that until we have a certain amount of loops. This will be governed by your pattern, so whatever pattern you make, not all puff stitches are the same in the amount of loops that they have on the hook. So please bear that in mind. Don't just assume that they all have seven or nine or ten, whichever it is. It all depends on the thickness that, of the puff that is required for this pattern. Um, but they are completed with a chain, but you do not count in the following chains. So please bear that in mind because you'll end up not having enough chains um, in your stitch. So we're going to start with the first puff stitch. So the first puff stitch will have a chain three. Now you can slip knot that into place if you want, or as I've said before, just hold your wool like so and make sure you've got your tail anchored in here. In a moment. Okay, so you hold it like so, so it's anchored in. Then what you do is you get your bunny square and you position that in your anchor point, a bit like so in, it's kind of where you need to work. And then pull through. So you have a makeshift. Again, can you see that I'm anchoring with my fingers here? And yarn through, and you just create that chain. Now I'm only going to do two chains there, purely because I don't want it to be too visible. Because I'm not going to use this as a, a secondary chain, or sorry, a secondary um, stitch or a fake stitch. So yarn over, go through your space. And pull back up so it's the height of those stitches. You can't shouldn't be able to get any more because you're anchored there, and you can't get any more because your chain two is keeping you at that height. Yarn over again, go back through, and pull up again. Yarn over and yarn through, and you should have one, two, three, four, five, six, nine. You need another one, so we should go do this four times. So we repeat this action four times like so and you should have three six nine nine loops including the loop that you already had when you started pick up your hook and slowly go through now bearing in mind when you went through my hook was in this position and not the other way around pick up your yarn again and then finish off with that that chain there that then completes your puff stitch then it's one two three yarn over again go back into that chain space and you pick up so now you should have three loops that's including the loop that is already on your hook do the same again and you do this four times so we've done it once twice three and then four Pick up your yarn, making sure that your yarn is pointing down so the smooth edge is going against these loops, and just slowly take it through through that loop there, and then you finish off with the chain. So it should bring them together like so. Then you chain one, and then you can continue your granny cluster squares in those chain spaces like so. Okay, one, and then we go back into this space. I'll just pull my wool and yarn over, go into the space, and yarn back up. Now that height should be similar 
the one here. So you're pulling up, you're not pulling up silly amounts. You're pulling up enough so you kind of you can see that you're in line with that cluster. Do the same again because you've made that height. That's two, three, four. You should have nine. So pull through and then finish off with that chain and then count one, two, three. Same again. Yarn over, pull up. And we do that two, three, four. Then you can count those stitches, those loops, including this one here, and you should have nine in total. Taking it through and then finish it with that chain. So it completes the stitch. That chain is part of that stitch. It's not part of this here, it's part of that stitch. It has to be done in order for that to be connected and completed. Okay, then you chain one and then you can work back into those squares. So just remember at this moment in time, it doesn't look the neatest. When everything comes together and we put in the extra stitches, it will. So we're going back into that puff stitch. One, two, three. Four, chain, and then one, two, three. Okay, so if you were to count it, it'd probably look like four, but it's not because that chain belongs to that stitch. One, two, three, four. Okay. And obviously you just repeat this as you would in a granny square. So your, your corners basically are those there. And you can see how they're not, they're forming a nice shape around it. They're not pulling. If they are turning up, like I say, you're probably finding that you are using the wrong hook size. So, and you might have too much tension on your wall. So make sure your wall can move smoothly and freely through your fingers. Because that is what will affect your tension. So yarn up. Okay, that's two. Three, four, pull through. One, two, three. Do the same again. There we go. And then just chain one. Onto our last cluster. <clears throat> we noticed on pulling my wool to give me a bit of a gather as well so chain one and then we work where that chain two is but what we'll do now instead of going into the stitch of that chain two we're going to go in between so i'm in between look i'm underneath that chain but i'm in between the puff stitch can you see and then i want to go back around so that sits like that then pick up your yarn and just pull through the slip stitch like so. And that's it. Do a bit of a slip stitch there and then we can work the slip stitch back into our corner. So we're back in position there. Okay. So all you do is you create a slip stitch that is basically a back post slip stitch in this case. Then you can slip stitch again but then take that into your corner oh, and just do a slip stitch again and that then repositions you perfectly so you can see how that is lying quite nicely actually there we go so that's that row what we'll do next is i'm going to do the next row and um i'll try and get little videos onto each segment so that it makes it much easier for you so all you do then is just follow the pattern and then just do your puff stitch like so. There we go. One, two. The more you do puff stitches, the easier and neater they will become. One, two, three, four. 
So let me just do that again for you because I think I'm still going too fast for you. <laughs> Sorry. So yarn over, go through, pick up your yarn. That gives you three. Yarn over, go through, pick up again. So that's twice I've done that. Third time, yarn over, go through, pick up. That's the third time. Last time, which is our fourth time, pick up your yarn and go through. And then you with your hook down, take it all the way through and then chain again. Chain one more time because that chain is part of that stitch that doesn't exist. So we have to create another chain and then just happily do your crochet clusters like so. Chain one, on to the next one. Nice. There we go. So you can see how that's forming your second row. Once you've done that, all you do then is do the slip stitch like we did before by going through that chain um, up that we created through the back of the puff stitch and, and then just do a slip stitch around the top end. There we go, my lovelies.